What's up everyone? It's your boy Norrenrad89 here bringing you another video and today we are continuing our Friday the 13th retrospective review series on to part 7, The New Blood. I have all the previous 6 films on a playlist and you can go check them out on my channel if you're new to the channel of course so you can breeze through. I retrospective reviewed all the previous 6 films in the Friday the 13th franchise and now yes we are on to part 7 and we are going to be talking spoilers. This film's from 1988, so let's get into this. Roll it. So the seventh installment in the Friday the 13th franchise, The New Blood. And how I usually do these is I go through my positives, my negatives, and then my rating. And I'll send you all home. And right off the bat, my key favorite positive about this film is my J the Jason Voorhees portrayal by Kane Hodder and the style and look of Jason Voorhees. This is by far my top dog favorite style and version of Jason. I like the mask. I like the kind of worn down skin, and missing clothes and like the chain hanging from his neck from the part six, you know, when Tommy Jarvis stuck him at the bottom of the lake. So all that stuff, Jason, the look, the portrayal on point for sure. Another great thing about this film is it is very different from the previous six in that as a viewer, we finally have a protagonist that we, uh, as is set up in this film, that can take on Jason in that third act because Tina Shepard is set up to having telekinesis and telepathic type abilities. So that's definitely something that's going to assist her when we get to that third act when she fights Jason Voorhees. Another great thing about this film, of course, too, is the music, the soundtrack, pretty much all these films, like every single one of these films has an amazing soundtrack an amazing score all that kind of stuff the music really does do top notch throughout all of the friday the 13th films for sure another cool thing about this film is i think it has like that good unique style is it doesn't start like any of the other films it actually focuses a lot on our protagonist character, Tina Shepard, and we've had other films like that. You know, Tommy Jarvis, we got three films with him, so of course they focused on him a lot. But yeah, Tina's character, she gets a lot of focus and setup in this film, especially that intro scene, because the intro, like first 10 minutes, is about her as a young child. This also falls into not like maybe negative, but mixed category is also the fact that we focus so much on Tina and... I know like Friday the 13th franchise, some people kind of get upset or they bitch about the fact that there are characters there to just like kill. There are certain characters that they just bring in like, oh, they just bring them there to kill. Well, I consider that that's Jason action, man. That's showing off Jason's skills and all that stuff. And this film, we spend a lot of time with characters that I don't necessarily like, you know what I mean? And we get to know them and spend a lot of time and set up with them and one of them being Dr. Cruz. I don't really like Dr. Cruz's character at all or any of the scenes involving him and Tina. I don't mind Tina. She's a great character. But Dr. Cruz and then the mother character too, they're just she's so oblivious for so long to what Dr. Cruz is doing and it's just no, nah, I don't enjoy them at all or any of the sequences that they have with them and Tina. Another negative with this film is going to be the kills. The kills are definitely tamed and completely not as good as any of the previous six. By this time, this is when they were starting to getting more edited for TV. They were kind of taming back the slasher uh, film craze because of a lot of, you know, the violence and stuff that was going on and like people preaching to, you know, the government and telling people that it's making our kids rotting their brains and causing killers, all that stuff. Like everything blew up in a certain time period and this film really felt that and it got edited down hardcore in terms of the kill action and we still i don't think like still to this day haven't gotten a really truly unrated version of this film that has all the stuff in it that we could have gotten and as i was saying in my positives another negative is like i said we have some really cool a good portrayal by jason but we don't see him a lot and tina's cool and i like the fact that we have a protagonist that has a great third act with jason that's a positive too that has a great third act that third act is mucho bueno and badass and when she starts battling him it really does meet the spot. But in the negatives, it's that first and second act and having so much setup and all this stuff that this film, it sometimes doesn't feel like a Friday the 13th film. It has the score, it has the music and stuff, but we do spend a lot of sequences where we don't see Jason at all. So it's just like, yeah, it doesn't always feel like a Friday the 13th film compared to part six, which is it's about Tommy Jarvis. It's, you know, we see Jason and it's there too. Like, you know, them bouncing between them and the pace is very consistent and it goes by very quick. 
this one's not really like that. So you can definitely feel it. It's different, but I could understand how some fans would love this film because it is very different from the previous six films and goes a route but doesn't go too fantastical. You know what I mean? It's not like Jason goes to hell status. It's just like adding a new character, putting a little spin on the story, and then like focusing on her and giving her some powers. So it's like not too fantastical out there where a fan can't be like, oh, I like this one, you know what I mean? So I could see why people or fans or people who don't like the previous six films would probably enjoy this one a little bit more. But definitely in the comment section, let me know what you think of this film because this is just my opinion. And in my book, this film is going to get a 7 out of 10. This kind of falls into that category of there's so many other Friday the 13th films that I do enjoy and I love. And this one's good and I really do have fun with this one. But there's just other ones that are better that meet my, that expectation that I want much more and set the bar higher so that's what kind of happens with this film but a 7 out of 10 is still a very respectable rating and like i said before in the comment section let me know what you all think of this film is this one of your top top favorites is it kind of at the bottom of the list or just the middle ground you know just hitting that spot i would love to hear from all of you and don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned to the channel because we're going to be retrospecting retrospective reviewing all the rest of the films so we're going to be on to the infamous Jason Takes Manhattan next, and also I'm going to be talking about the next Obi-Wan episodes as well, so stay tuned to the channel so you don't miss those videos. Have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.